spotlight. Make sure to say hi in the comments and tell us where you are watching from. Today, I'm excited about our show because we are diving deep with best-selling author Lee Elder, the executive director of the Professional Football Researchers Association. He's also a San Diego State grad who majored in radio TV journalism and was a sports broadcaster and sports writer early in his career and is a proud inductee into the Imperial Valley High School Football Coaches Hall of Fame as a journalist. He also spent 23 years as a PR rep in the auto racing industry. So without further ado, I am thrilled to welcome back to the show, Lee Elder, how are you today? Karen, it's good to see you again. How's everything with you? Everything is awesome. I am excited to have you on the show because of a couple of things, but you have some really great news that we're going to talk about later on. But we're going to talk about your book, Coach George Allen. But before we do that, I'd like to talk a little bit about your journey uh, to becoming a writer. Because it's if you didn't just roll over yesterday and say, I think I'm going to write a book about, you know, Coach George Allen, you have an actual history behind you. And how many books do you have published right now? Uh, right now I have 20. Okay. So you're not a newcomer. You're not a newbie in this. Um, and, and you have lots and lots of books. What's that journey been like when you decided to pick up the pen for the very first time and put those words to paper? Well, uh, the first five years that I was a writer, I mean, I was in broadcasting before that, but I was a sports writer and I had to come up with five or six different stories about ball games every day and they had to be concise they had to be six eight inches or shorter so i had to learn how to write tight uh -huh. and i think that gave me some discipline i wouldn't have had otherwise and then i moved into the public relations business and then i started writing magazine length treatments so luckily for me the need the professional need kept stretching me a little bit and when i finally wrote that bloody hill uh, I got stretched like I'd never been stretched before, and it was it was a long learning process. But from head to fingertips, you just have to get yourself into what I call condition, writing condition. And that was a long learning process, but it was uh, self-fulfilling. And you actually have a process. You write a certain amount of words every day, don't you? I demand that I write a thousand words a day every day. Not necessarily always in a book, but frequently it is in a book, but that'll include blogs, that'll include texts, that'll include letters, emails that I write to people. But I always force myself to write a thousand words a day because it's like jogging. If you don't jog every day, you won't be able to jog. You'll be terrible. You'll be out of shape. If you don't write every day, it's exactly the same thing. Right. I mean, there's ob it obviously works for you. Um and, and you continue to write. Now, you also did a book um, with our friend, um, Buck Weber. Let's talk a little bit about that first, because we actually had, you all came on the show and we talked about it. How fun was that? Because that was very much a fiction dive for you. Yes, it sure was. In fact, we've written three. Um, but the two of us working together was, uh, well, we talked about it before. It was it was just the latest part of this long friendship that we've had. We've known each other better than 40 years. Yeah. And working together in a creative sense was about as much fun as you can have. He's, as you know, he's one of the great guys, one of the great people in the world. And when we were able to work together on something that was creative, I know he enjoyed it because he hadn't done that kind of thing before. And I enjoyed it because I just, he's my buddy and I love writing. So that was uh, a great deal of fun. Do you encourage, you know, friends to get together and do things like this? Because I've heard that, you know, you you should never mix your personal with your professional career. But I think this is a little different, right? You guys took your love for the genre and you, you wrote this. You know, it, it depends on the person. Generally speaking, mixing business and pleasure is not always a su successful right. plan. But with Bucky Weber and I, it worked out very well. Like I said, we've written three books together. And we have written a fourth, what I would call a treatment. It's a short story okay. that we want to put out. Uh, we want to put on Kindle for free just to entice people to get interested in the other three books that we've written. We haven't published that yet. We're working on it. Great idea. That's a, that's a great idea. I like that. 
So let's just dive into the new book. This is, it's called Coach George Allen. And you are friends with Max Fields who played for Allen at Whittier College. And, and as a matter of fact, you quote him frequently in this book um, because he pushed you to write this book for years, right? So he pushed you, but how did it end up being this kind of book? Well, uh, Max and I met when I lived in the Imperial Valley and um, he told me all of his George Allen stories from when he played it for Allen at Whittier. And so all these years later, when I got a chance to write the book, I called him and said, OK, you have to tell me all the same stories, but this time I'm taking notes. Right. So that made him laugh. Um, so that was sort of planting the seed. And then years later, after I wrote That Bloody Hill, uh, the people at McFarland said, we'd like you to write a football book. And I said, all I've got is is George Allen, and I want to call it Turnaround, about his first two years with the Rams. Mm -hmm. And they very intelligently said, that's a terrible idea. But if you write a full biography, no one's done that, that will sell. And the more I thought about it, the more I knew they were right. So um, this all came together that way. But the reason that Allen was the, the real subject is I sat next to my dad at a lot of football games at the Coliseum, and we saw a lot of George Allen games. And that, that treatment, that, that feel of my dad was with me as I researched and wrote. And so this became quite a, quite a unique experience. And, and in order to do this, you had to really dive deep, right? You had to really learn everything and anything that you could uh, about him. And because you wanted to, you really wanted to write what was eventually going to be this original idea of doing a biography, but li very little was written about him. So can you shed a little light on what it was like when he was in his college years coaching? Is it, was it different? I'm not a sports girl in any way, shape or form. So if I'm not even using the right terminology, I'm assuming you're going to say, no, 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 that's not how you say it. But he was a college. He, he has a he was very active in the college. Arena. Yeah, he, he started his first coaching assignment as a head coach was at Morningside College in Sioux City, Iowa. Mm -hmm. And uh, then he went from there to Whittier College out there in Southern California. And from there, he became for one year the receivers coach for the L.A. Rams in 1957. The process of writing about Allen was a little bit challenging in that there wasn't much written about his college years. And I had to go find that stuff. But I did, thanks to Max and some of his teammates. But the big gold mine for me was at the Pro Football Hall of Fame in the Ralph Wilson Research Room. George Allen's papers are there. Oh. There was a fire at the Allen House. The house was declared a total loss. The insurance company got everything that was salvageable, and that meant every stick of paper that was on George Allen's desk. The insurance company had no idea what to do with it. They gave it to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Wow. And I went through it. And there were times, now, Karen, you've talked to a lot of people. You understand what I'm about to say. I felt at times like I was walking around in the mind of a genius. Yeah. Because he had a very academic approach to a lot of things in terms of coaching. He was a very intelligent man. He had a master's degree in physical education. He was quite brilliant. So when you go through his deepest thoughts, his scribbled notes, his long papers, some of them that I guess he wrote uh, during his academic career, you really learn a lot. And it was a phenomenal experience, especially for a football guy. So if I were to ask you, what is one huge nugget that when you dug it out, you literally went, oh, my God goodness, I, I had no idea. Was there something that you just were so surprised at? Um, yeah, as a football guy, I was really surprised at the way he went about team building. Mm -hmm. And it transfers through every bit of his career. Uh, when he was at Morningside, when he was at Whittier, they would have a barbecue at a local park and his family would be there and the kids thought they were getting a free hamburger. What he was doing was building his team. Uh -huh. When he was coaching at Whittier, he did exactly the same thing. He did it when he was a coach of the Rams. He did it when he was with the Redskins. But the big thing, the really the thing that opened my eyes was at Long Beach State, he had this relationship with the people that ran Burger King. And so he would, on either Thursday or Friday, have a truck come in and just feed the kids, feed the players. And 
They'd have milkshakes. They'd play horseshoes. They'd do all these things. And he's building a team. And when I talked to some of the players and when I talked to one of the assistant coaches, that told me something about the way that Allen put things together. I was, I was, it's just another piece of impressive information. It feels like it was a family. It, it feels like he created the community, he created the team, and he created sort of like a family of, of individuals that came back to be involved in all of this. Um, when you when you wrote this book, was it your intention that sports enthusiasts, football enthusiasts in particular, would say, "Wow, I've never heard a you know a background story. There's never been anything written on him. I, I'm going to get this book." Are you also looking to um, hook in new readers that, like myself and even my husband, who who said, "Oh, wow, this this is cool. I, I don't know much about him," and now you're pulling in some new readers that maybe never even would have thought to go look for something like that. So, is it two pronged? You're going after the existing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's and the reason is what I really wanted to find out when I wrote this thing was how did he win? Why was he able to turn losers into winners very quickly? I mean, you and I both remember the 65 Rams. They were terrible. <laughs> yeah. But in 66, they were pretty good. In the 67, they were in the playoffs. How did he do that? That's what I wanted to know. That transfers to business. That transfers to education. That transfers to all walks of life, the ability to turn things around. And I wanted to know how he did it. So I think that a non-football person will read it and see some some pieces of leadership that they that they didn't really think about before. That's part of what I wanted to dig up because I didn't know. I wanted to find out myself. So what was one thing? What was one of those um, leadership things that he did that does translate into the business world and does translate into other things, not just football, that you identified? He didn't yell. Wow. Football okay. coaches yell. It's in yeah. their DNA. They are they 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 begin their career screaming and they don't stop until they're dead. But George Allen spoke. He did not yell. Even at practice, he did not yell. In fact, I have a line in the book. I said he didn't yell at the Whittier players. After all, who yells at poets? But he did not yell. He didn't shout. And Max talked about that. My friend Max Fields talked about how he didn't yell. He just, why didn't you do this? Let's do it this way. Forget about it. Next week is what matters. And he did that with the Redskins. He had a punt returner named Speedy Duncan who fumbled. Speedy was a great punt returner, but he ran into a little rash of time when he fumbled. And Allen would just stand there and say, forget it. All that matters is next week. It doesn't matter. But the funny thing is, it wasn't George Allen who solved the problem. Speedy Duncan's wife noticed what he was doing when he was about to receive the ball. (laughs) <laughs> she talked to him. And he stopped fumbling. But Allen never jumped on him. He just said, forget it and get better. And so that's, I, I, that's interesting. I mean, I, I think of that also how that would relate to parenting skills. Yep. Right. Yep. You know, those those parents who have spent a lifetime yelling at their kids versus those parents who have spoken to their kids and encouraged conversation. I, I'm sure we could find a correlation there. Well, my wife taught for 42 years. Yes, I believe that we could probably find a correlation there. So one of the nuggets, you heard it here first from the book, is is when is how you approach what you do. Do not yell. Speak nicely. And that, that, will, that will help. You mentioned earlier um, your first book, The Blood Hill, and that is also from Mc, uh, McFarland, correct? Yep. Um, when, when did you write that book? What year did you write that book? It was finished in 2017. It was published uh, January of 18, I think. So I'm curious. Um, McFarland is a traditional publisher. It is a real publisher. Did they come to you? Did you search them out? No. As a matter of fact, I, this is another one of those deals where I got lucky. It's better to be lucky than good. Um, I had this mass of information. I'd written most of the book already, and I didn't know what to do with it. So I called a, a, another member of the Pro Football Researchers Association, who I know worked for a publisher. I said, I'm not asking you to publish my book. I'm asking you what to do with it. How do I submit it? And he asked me to tell him about it, and I did. And two weeks later, I got an email from him saying they wanted to publish the book. So uh, the primary thing is to get lucky. But uh, the other thing is that 
understand what you're doing when you start to do it. Well, and Lee, there are no accidents. Um, uh, I believe that obviously you just had that inclination. You knew that you the right questions to ask. Um, and it's, and thank goodness for that. But the fact that you went in that way and did it that way probably w- allowed them to take a step back and go, okay, he's not, he's not one of those kind of people that are come, you know, pitch my book and, and, and sell my book. So you did it good. And then they come to you and they tell you the exact kind of book that they want you to write, not what you wanted to write. And that means they did a good thing, right? Because I think we have something we would like to share. Something just happened that you literally emailed me and said, I can say it. Oh, I was so happy. This happened to me two weeks ago, but I want, I'm looking at the exact name of it. I won the Nelson Ross Award, which is basically the book of the year from the Pro Football Researchers Association. Wow. And I was so excited about that. I, I didn't think I'd win because my book was released in December. Well, who's got a chance to read it uh, before the end of the year? But I won. And so I was very pleased and very, very proud to tell you that. I'm thrilled. And I'm, uh, you know, ladies and gentlemen, as we're sitting here talking to Lee Elder about this, congratulations. That is a huge accomplishment. I'm very excited for you. Is there like a ceremony? Do they send you a certificate or a, a statue or what do they do? Uh, well, there's a... There's a big parade. No, uh, <laughs> it's just recognition among my peers. And that's really all that matters is yeah. the we've got 400 members of the PFRA. And uh, to be recognized by by those uh, that association, that's all I really need. I was just very, very pleased that the work was recognized. And, and, you know, for those of you who are saying, okay, we've talked a lot about this book. I think, would somebody tell us how to go get it? So I'm, I'm going to accommodate people right now uh, by putting the book up here. All you have to do, guys, is pick up your phone, turn on your camera, not even click on your camera. Just turn it on and put it right in front of that QR code, and it will take you over to uh, Amazon to pick up the book. This is for the Kindle version. There's also a paperback version as well, if you are like me, and I like to have that hard copy in my hand. I'm going to take this off the screen. Do you have another book in you? Are you coming out with another one? Uh, It'll be a little while. I'm working on something. Yeah, I've got two ideas. I have to see which one's going to work best. So, So now that this is such a success, this particular book, with the awards that you've received, um, is this something that McFarland may come back to you and say, okay, we need number two, we, have, we need you to do this? I mean, it sounds like they really like the way you write. Well, I hope so. But yeah. um, in today's world, yeah. you know, it's it's a little bit harder for publishers than it used to be. Right. There's not as much paper as there used to be. It's a little yeah. bit harder to get paper. It's a little bit harder to, to do a lot of uh, the things that publishers have to do. So, I mean, I have a wonderful relationship with them. They've been great to me. They've been great to work with but i also understand they have a lot of other authors too so when the time comes i'll probably go to them with an idea absolutely well i'm thrilled for you again congratulations we want to let people know how they can follow you you have a facebook page it says facebook.com forward slash george allen book that's that's pretty self-explanatory and as well we have a facebook page for the other book which you're just going to go to facebook.com forward slash elder book Write that down. Go check it out. And one last time, we know that you want to pick up the book. Go and scan this and go find the book. And then let us know what you think about it, okay? And as a matter of fact, in the comments, we will be making sure to answer your questions. If you have a question for Lee, write your question in the comments, and we'll make sure that Lee sees it so that he can respond right back to you. Any last thoughts, Lee? about the writing process, about this amazing honor that you just received, about the book, about life in general? Well, I have to say uh, that my wife, Amy, was amazingly supportive through the whole process. You and I have talked about this, but she had an illness uh, that struck right in the middle of writing this thing. And she never once said to me, listen, stop that. You need to help me. She never did any of that. All she ever did was she helped me proofread, Wow. She helped me pick photographs. She helped me do all that stuff. She looked at the cover. She liked it. Otherwise, I would have said we need a different one. Um, she has been amazingly supportive. And so I, uh, I'm i just very, very fortunate to have my wife, Amy, working with me. 
I love that. I love that. Thank you, Amy. And thank you for sharing his brilliance with us today. Lee, thank you again. Congratulations. And keep it up. Keep up all that well, amazing work. Thank you again. This is a wonderful opportunity to talk. Well, as always, as always, and when you do your next book, you'll come back on and share it with all of us. Hey, all go out, give somebody an awesome day. We are so appreciative that you spent your time with us today. For that, we are eternally grateful. See you next time on the next Authors Bite Live. Goodbye, everyone.